Death Stranding Director's Cut comes with a slew of updates and new content, including but not limited to new weapons, a new vehicle, new ways to deliver cargo, and even a brand new story mission. Unlike the recently released Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, which came with a big piece of new content, Death Stranding is instead opting for a ton of smaller tweaks and additions, which can make it a bit more confusing when trying to identify exactly what it is you're getting with this upgrade. But don't worry, we have you covered. We've combed through as much as we could and picked out what we think are the 13 biggest additions and changes to Death Stranding Director's Cut. Before we get into the bigger things, let's go through some of the graphical updates. The game now features two graphic options, a quality mode that runs at a native 4K resolution and targets 60 frames per second, or a performance mode that features a scaled 4K resolution with a more stable frame rate, though it's still not locked at 60 FPS. I want to note that I mostly played on the quality mode and I've yet to really see the frame rate dip. Also, both of these modes can be played in an ultra widescreen mode, which is more like an ultra widescreen simulator mode as it just letterboxes the gameplay on your TV. Sam's favorite drink, Monster Energy, seems to be no more. Monster Energy could survive the apocalyptic Death Stranding, but it couldn't survive a console jump. We assume this is the result of some sort of simple licensing deal expiring, but regardless, all mentions of Monster Energy are gone and are now replaced with a more on-brand Bridges Energy. You can't have a PlayStation 5 game without some really cool DualSense features, and Death Stranding Director's Cut has plenty. First off, the adaptive triggers work exactly how you would expect. Weapons all fire with different sensations, and the heavier Sam's cargo load is, the harder it is to pull down the trigger. When running on different terrain, the controller's vibrating haptic feedback responds appropriately. For example, running on smooth concrete will feel a lot different than sloshing around on the snow. Combat has also seen a bit of an improvement. You can now equip gloves to pummel your opponent with, and they can also help climb faster, but where's the fun in that? He's also a bit more agile now and can drop kick and knee kick and body slam foes as he runs towards them. Also, mules have taken a liking to using turrets, of course, once you take that turret enemy down, it's free for you to use to rain hell down on your combatants. A few new items have been added for fabrication. The first is the Mazer Gun, which fires a continuous electrical charge that immobilizes mules and vehicles. Because it's electricity-based, it's even more effective when in water. Unfortunately, it's not blood-based, so it has zero effect on BTs. Another new item is a brand new exoskeleton called the Support Skeleton. This is meant to be the most all-around skeleton to somewhat replace the all-terrain, power, and speed skeletons that are available now. It's fast, it can carry a lot, and it's good on rough terrain. It's more of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of deal. Also, unlike any other exoskeleton in the game, it's solar-powered, so it can charge in sunny or even cloudy weather, leaving you way less likely to be stranded without power. A firing range has been added to the terminals, allowing you to check out all the weapons in the game and even test your skill with them. All of the weapons are on the table, and you can equip whichever one you'd like to try and shoot at the provided targets, or you can jump into one of the many drills available and see how long it takes to get through one of the various pre-made scenarios. There's also ranked drills, which allow you to compete with other players for the best results. An all-new vehicle has arrived in the form of the Roadster. The Roadster is meant for smooth highways or the racetrack, but you can use it to make deliveries too, but it's not super great on rocky terrain or water, and even though you can load cargo onto it, unless the client demands you make your deliveries in style, I'd stick with the truck and keep the Roadster on the racetrack. Speaking of the racetrack, you can now build a fully functioning racetrack by the Timefall farm that allows Sam to test his driving skills by racing against the clock in a reverse trike, truck, or the Roadster. The racetrack gives you access to a few different courses, as well as mirrored versions of each. And just like in the training ground, there are ranked races which allows you to submit times to compare yourself to other players. Death Stranding Director's Cut now has a few new buildable structures to help Sam on his deliveries. First is a cargo catapult that can be loaded up with a bunch of cargo and shot through the air towards your destination. Don't worry, it's fitted with a parachute as to not damage your precious cargo. The range on it isn't incredible, but it should help when getting over some small mountains or wide rivers. Another is a jump ramp that allows vehicles to shoot over a small distance. 
When on a reverse trike, you can even have Sam do some cool moves, which are great for photo mode. And finally, Sam can build a Cairo bridge to help get over tighter areas that the larger bridges couldn't fit. Cairo bridges are also fitted with a special network ID that prevents mules from using them. Watch out though, Cairo bridges will disappear if it rains or snows. The ruined factory seen in the reveal trailer for Death Stranding Director's Cut is a set of new missions that see Sam delving into an underground facility littered with old world interiors, and of course, mules. I don't want to spoil anything about what takes place down here, but I can confidently say that it's worth a look. Delivery bots have been in Death Stranding since the beginning, but they've technically only existed in cutscenes where you can send them on autonomous deliveries while you prioritize other things. Now you can actually build a buddy bot to travel alongside you. The buddy bot has two functions. It can hold a bunch of cargo for Sam and follow him around, or if Sam is able to hold everything in his backpack and suit, he can ride on the bot to his destination. You won't be getting any S ranks riding the bot as it's pretty slow, but it's a nice feature to have if you basically want the game to play itself and just be along for the ride. Watch out though, the bot can only travel within the chiral network, and he doesn't do so great when attacked by mules or BTs. Death Stranding has always had an emphasis on customization, so it only makes sense that we've gotten even more control to make Sam look exactly how we want. We can change BB's color scheme, your suit now has an array of colors to choose from, and best of all, Sam's backpack has gotten quite a few upgrades. Not only can you change the color, but you can now add patches and stabilizers to the back, allowing Sam to keep his balance better and even glide from high distances with upgraded stabilizers. In the base version of Death Stranding, once you beat the game, you could replay Cliff's Nightmares of War. In the director's cut, you're now also allowed to replay any of the big boss battles, known here as Nightmare Battles. And just like the racing or firing range, there are also ranked versions which allows you to submit high scores against other players, judging both time taken to finish the encounter and damage taken. So those are the biggest changes to expect when booting up Death Stranding Director's Cut. There's even more smaller tweaks such as being able to ride zip lines with a carrier attached and a new routing tutorial at the beginning of the game. So will you be suiting up for Death Stranding Director's Cut? If so, which of these new features has you the most excited? Make sure to sound off in the comments below and for more on Death Stranding, stick with IGN.